welcome you to Disciple Makers today. We're going to be talking to some powerful warriors for Christ. When you think about warriors, the thought of maybe David in the Bible, Michael, the archangel, or even Conan, the barbarian, might come to mind. But it's not very often we think of the youth or women who fight the good fight of faith. You know, the Bible says, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. What is your weapon today? Why don't you come and just join us today and sit down and enjoy this show? We have two wonderful guests with some powerful testimonies for Christ, and we're going to be talking to them. If you can, go ahead and call a friend and join us. I want to welcome you to the show. Welcome, it, it, your name again? Ellie. Ellie and? Kevin. Kevin, I want to welcome you to Disciple Makers today. Thank you. you know, every warrior has a weapon. Yes, they do. And they are fighters. Now, I have word that you guys are awesome warriors for Christ. Ellie, would you tell us a little bit about you and your background? Well, I was born blind, completely blind. I went to surgery when I was 45 days, and then I went to surgery again when I was eight. I saw my mom's face for the first time when I was eight years old. Wow, what an awesome testimony. Yes, and that caused a lot of fears in my life, uh, a lot of dependence on my family, and I, the only place I could be myself was in church. Wow, that's where you felt the most comfortable. Yes. Okay, and Kevin, tell us a little bit about you. Yes, well, um, I met Jesus Christ about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And, well, my life growing up, uh, my parents got divorced when I was very young. And I never got to spend time with my dad much. But I did have a stepdad, and, you know, he always told me, like, he taught me the right rules, and, you know, he, he made me who I am today. Wow. But I always noticed that there was something missing, and what that was was the, the love of the, of the father and even though my stepfather you know he was always there he always gave us what we needed mm -hmm. I still needed that interaction and when I came to church um, I met that love and I found that encounter with God and it was like you know it was wow. that connection instant connection with our Abba Father and let me tell you I could see the glow I could see it the light bulb is definitely on and I thank God for that you know, I was just talking about the youth. It's not very often you have young warriors. Now I know you guys are actually warriors because you do have a ministry. Could you, one of you tell us about that? Well, yeah, we have, we started our show named Nisco's on Fire. And what now, it- Could you say that again? Yeah, Nisco's on Fire. That's Spanish, isn't it? No, that's actually Hebrew. Hebrew. Yes. Tell me about that. It's in the Old Testament. How did the Testament. name come about? It's yeah. Well, we found we found it in the Old Testament in our church. Um, our pastor, she um, she's really connected with the youth, and so she would always point out things to get connected with the youth, and you know she always wanted to um, pull the youth. So she found his name for us in the Old Testament, and what it means is youth warrior of God. Youth warriors, that's why I have my sword today. Yes. To show that we don't wrestle with this type of weapon. We wrestle with what? With the Bible. We, with we, the Bible, the Word of God. Yes. That's what makes the difference. Now, I want to continue a little bit about your story. We'll get back to you, Kevin. Uh, tell us a little bit more about, so you now see, is that yes. right? I now see. And um, you were telling me about the insecurities that come from? I had a lot of insecurities from that because I wasn't able to see at school. I was in, I went to a school where it was for blind people, mm -hmm. so I had to interact with them and I had to talk to them. But they started realizing that I was special. They started realizing that God was inside of me, and they took me wow. out of school. So I got thrown to this new world where everybody was normal, and I was the only one that wasn't. And that caused so many fears, and I grew up thinking I was the ugliest girl in the world. Oh, and we can see that's <laughs> absolutely not true. I grew up. I got separated from my dad to come over to this country, and it was such a drastic change for me. And I got put in um, psychology in a, uh, with a... With a <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I 
gotta put in psychology with how do you call that? Oh, <laughs> what, oh just with psychologist. Psychology. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I got put in psychology, whatever psychology, and she started making me think I was crazy. What? Yes. Yeah, so That's not what you're supposed to do. And <laughs> and I came to God. My mom forced me to come to church after I strayed away. How old away. were you at that point? I was 12. 12 years I old. I strayed away from God for two years. Okay. And my mom forced me to come to church, and that was the most amazing thing she could ever done. So if you have a kid and they don't want to go to church, take them to church. Wow. That's the best. Even if they don't want to, just take them. And one day, they'll look back at it and say, Mom, Dad, thank you. Now tell me, what, what was going on that made that such an awesome experience for you? Well, our church is pretty amazing. We have this connection with the altar, and the altar had this connection with the presence of God. And it was just so amazing. We get to go to retreats, mm -hmm. and when we went there, I had my first encounter with God when I was wow. 12 years old. I heard the Holy Spirit tell me my calling. Did you hear it audibly? You yes, heard the words? I heard his voice. And I was What did that sound to like to you? It sounded like love. It sounded wow. like mercy. It sounded mm. like I'll Compassion. take you back. Yeah. It sounded like he never left. Wow. And when you have this lack of love and you just face the Holy Spirit out of nowhere, that changed your life. And at that point I realized that I was meant to be in church. That was the only reason I was dying outside, because I was where I was not belonging, you know? So you have a personal relationship yes. with God. Now, young people, I must say, it's not every day and it's not every young person out there that cares to even have a relationship. But you just heard Elle's testimony, powerful. She actually heard the audible voice of the Holy Spirit what amazing experience one can have. Now, let's come back over here. And let me ask you, Kevin, did you have a drastic encounter like that when you came to the Lord? Yes, I actually did. You um, did? Yes. All right. I, honestly, when I was in, in the world before I met Jesus, I, I kind of knew in the back of my head that I had a purpose. But at the same time, I was like, you know, what is that purpose? Why exactly do I exist? I, I always questioned myself and, you know, our existence, basically. I said, we just, do we just live to die? Mm. And when I that's met... Pretty, that's pretty deep and philosophical at this young age. <laughs> he's he's, he's, really he's very like deep. Yes. <laughs> okay. And so when, when I met Jesus um, at the retreat about four years ago, um, he, he changed my life completely. Um, before, I, I was all dark, I never wanted anybody to acknowledge me. I never mm. wanted to bring any attention to myself. Mm. And uh, like I had the long hair, I had... You did everything to hide yes. who you really... Yes, I was the quiet one of the family. Mm -hmm. Even uh, my parents, like uh, it was me and my brother and my sister, we came to church first. And um, we went to the retreat and when we came back, my aunt was the one who brought us to church, she invited us. And she called my mom. She's like, hey, you want to receive your kid uh, from this retreat that they're coming back from? And my mom's like, fine, and we'll go with, I'll go with my husband. And so at the, when they receive us, um, I remember the pastor, she came and she wanted my brother. He was older, he's older than me by two years. And she wanted him to give his testimony uh, in front of everybody, like what did God do at the retreat? Mm -hmm. And my brother, out of being the most outgoing one, mm -hmm. he, he was like, no, 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 he, he <laughs> stepped back completely. Not on this topic. Yeah. <laughs> and so she asked my sister, and my sister, like, she was like, is he talking to me or whatever? <laughs> and so since they both hesitated, I just stood up and wow. I just walked to the front. And, and, and they were all shocked. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so the pastor, she just grabbed my hand and she walked me up to the altar. And that walk, I'll never forget it. It was like something took control of me. Wow. And something just got in my step. And when I got on the altar, um, the first thing I said was, I had my first encounter with the love of God at the retreat. And um, like it, it's, it, it just brings me so much emotion. And... Um, 
It's just something I'll never forget. Was it? It was an emotional. Is that how the love of God encounters? Yes, like you encounter that. That that's where God said our relationship has always been here. But did He speak now, to you audibly as well? Or yes, at the what? retreat. At the and He retreat. said something different to you. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever tell people this and they think you're crazy? Yes, yeah. all the time. <laughs> uh, or they don't believe me. Yeah. Young people, right? Yeah. You heard God. God spoke and to so, you. Well, I mean, it's like the Bible says, the, the kingdom of heaven is for the children. Yes. And, and by that like time... like little children. Yes. And, and like, at the retreat, I was like 15 years. Um, I'm 18 years now. And um, he, he told me that. He was like, our relationship has always been there and you've always known me. But now um, you have accepted me. And so, like, that just tied me to him. It wow. tied me to him and it connected me with him. And he told me, you know, you have a purpose as my son because I, as your God, I have the control over your life and I will guide your steps. And, uh, and so, I didn't know my purpose from then on, but I knew I was in the right hands. Wow. I knew that there, um, he was going to mold my character. He was going to make me be me, basically, not hide. Not hide who yes. you were. He was let, just reaffirming yes. that he created you. You were made with purpose. Yes. And he's going to be the one to help you to walk it out. Yes. Uh, now, speak to the camera. What do you say to the young people who think the answer is in drugs? They think it's an alcohol. What about the nightclubs? Well, what we say is all that is temporary. You could be happy. And that, I mean, to be honest, sex will make you happy for a while. Drugs will make you happy for a while. People will make you happy for a while. But after all that is gone, after you get home and it's 12 o'clock at night or it's 2 a.m. at night and you get in the bathroom and you look at yourself in the mirror, you're nothing because mm. we're nothing without the presence of God. Amen. It was just a little fun. It was just a little, but the emptiness is still there. Still there. And for all you girls that think meeting the right guy is going to change that, it won't because you can meet the most amazing guy in the world, but if he's not a God of, you know, a man of God, it's not going to work. You should let God control your life. Being Christian is not boring. It is not... Say that again. <laughs> it is not... I know that a lot of people don't give the right testimony of being Christian, but you can change that. You could be the one person they look at and be like, I want to be just like that girl. Oh, I want to wow. be just like that guy because that guy is different. And that's why we make this show because we want to let you guys know that it's not over yet, that you have a calling, that you have a purpose, and that the presence of God just wants to be inside of you. You can't run away from God. You can't hide from God. He'll get you. And it's better to come, you know, because he's calling you than to come because something happened in your life and you have to find God. Yes, and, and not only that, but as, as a Christian, don't be the kid that is dragged to church. Be the kid who is willing to pull people to church. Wow. Because a lot of people look down on the youth. A lot of people say, oh, the youth, they're, they're usually in the worship group. They're mm -hmm. usually just, you know, in, in groups and friends and stuff. And they're not really involved in the government of the church. But in reality, the youth are the ones, are the next generation, basically. They're the mm -hmm. ones who are going to carry yes, yes. what the, the older adults have. Yes. And so I want the youth to, you know, affirm to that, you know, that those words that what they have is what's going to be ours. They're, they're, what they have is our inheritance. Yes. And so we have to be ready for that. We can't be playing around with our lives. We can't say, oh, let me enjoy my life and then come to God. Because... No like, practice, no training. Yes. You're, you're going to do exactly what you used to do yeah, in the exactly. next phase. And I'm telling you, it's so much easier to go now than go as an adult. Because... I'm telling you, the, the healing, the, the process mm. is so much harder when you're an adult. It's like they say to, um, to, to dogs, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And so it's greater to go as youth when we're getting the, the small meals first yeah. to then grow and get the, the heavier meals. Amen. The meatier things. <laughs> now you alluded uh, to a show that you both co-host. Mm -hmm. Could you tell 
could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so our show is called, like I said, Nenis Goes on Fire, which is Youth Warrior. And we like to put our main focus on the youth. Like I said, the youth like to sit in the back, like to just come to church and uh, show their face and say, oh, I'm holy, I'm this, I'm that, but they're really not doing anything for God. And so what I want to, uh, what we do in the show is like basically hit those points where you can be a part of the ministry in church. You can be a part of pleasing God with your life. And we hit all the points like, changes if they're good or bad we hit points like relationship because a lot of adults say you can't date until you're a certain age but it's natural if we meet somebody we're attracted to and so i wanted we what we teach there is that how to make it work under god because a lot of people in the bible a lot of the disciples jesus disciples they were all young and by the time people got married back then, even even old times, like before, I mean, after the Bible, like people got married at young ages. And, you know, we want to be ready for, and we want to know how to work in relationships. Now, I know you guys have this awesome show that you do, and you are bringing the youth and you're teaching them because you do see this as a problem when the youth come into the church and they're not involved. And most of the things that they do are very just social interaction. And now, how does that all play in with the thought of being a warrior? How does that work? Well, Yanisco means warrior, and we added the on fire part because there's a lot of warriors that, you know, they can just be part of the military, basically, part of the... The uh, army, the yeah. group. <laughs> and so... What, what we mean by on fire is, you know, you have to be active. You have to be doing something. And so we know that we go through struggles every day of our lives. And the Bible even says that we sin every day. Mm -hmm. So why we become warriors is to fight that. We know that to as fight humans, sin. Yes. So you don't war against people. You don't even war against youth. You're warring against, your battle is against sin. Yes. Helping others to conquer and to fight and to overcome and be victorious. Yes, because we all know that salvation is individual. Mm -hmm. Even if we want to help somebody or do something for somebody else, salvation is, is individual and it comes from the heart. True. So what we, what we show is how to fight against sin, how to fight against the struggles of the daily life and about decisions and about making the right decision according to the Bible. Because you said earlier that you know the youth are going to have certain experiences. Yes. They are going to face, uh, you know, sexual encounters, uh, promiscuity, alcoholism. Yes. It's all in the world. But you teach them how to follow guidelines yes. that will cause them to be safe. Now, do you, you're, you're the co-host of the show. Is this part of the calling that you saw that the Lord is calling you to? Yes. I, I believe that I was, God, when God spoke to me, he said, I made you from a stuffer generation. And wow. I believe that I go through a lot of stuff that the people that are around my age go through. And what we want as, as, as in this show is to show them that they can do things. It's to let them know that this generation is crying out for help. And that's what the, the, the old people don't see or the, the older people don't see is they judge and they say, but there's another side of the story. You know? They judge. That yes. happens a lot yes. in the church, doesn't it? Yes. And, and I cannot say I haven't been guilty of that, mm -hmm. you know, especially when you see, just like you said, you know, they seem like they're not involved, they're playing, they're not, you really believe that they're not hearing yes. and they're not being impacted. But the Word of God tells us that His Word is sharp yes. and it's quick and it's powerful. Yes. So something is going on there. And even if you don't believe it, even when you go to church and you think that those kids are not listening, their spirit is so listening. And whenever they go through something, they remember what they heard. Yeah. Even mm. if they were not connected, that's how our mind works as teens. Yeah. We remember every single thing that people say to us. And we know that this generation is meant to conquer the world. We believe in a supernatural God. Wow. And we believe that God is doing supernatural things. We pray for youth and their feet grows. We pray for people and wow, they get healed. Wow, miracles. Yes. yes, and that's what we want to bring to Jacksonville. 
We want that to happen. We want a revolution to be passed. But we know that this generation has to provoke it. You have to provoke yeah. the presence of and power of God. Do you ever see them, the kids, the youth at the altar crying? Do they ever cry out? Every day. It's every day, every service. The altar is full of people. It's full of not just teens, of older people, of really, really people that's 80 years old. They mm. crying on the altar for the presence of God. Mm. And when it comes down, I'm telling you, it comes down. There's no time for preaching. There's no time for anything but to surrender in front of the presence of Amen. God. Amen. So why don't you look into this camera, Kevin, and, and just speak to the youth. Because, uh, you know, I could see the presence of God even in your lives, even though you're not in church. You're not, you know, in a religious setting. The glory of God just shines forth so clearly that I could see that what you're talking about is real to you. Would you look into the camera and just talk to the youth? Yes, one thing that I want to say to the youth and might be hard to believe is that, and might be even hard for the adults to believe, is that one of the things that kills the calling of the youth could be their own parents, mm. could, there, could be the adults. Because maybe they, they don't think that you're ready for um, anything that God wants for you. Maybe they think that, you know, you're out in the world partying and because they're the ones at church, but then they're the ones dragging you to church. But I want the youth to hold on to, you know, their purpose, their calling, because they can go ahead. Salvation is individual, like I said earlier. And the youth can go ahead and do their own calling in God's name. Amen. Yeah, and, I know you have more to say. Go ahead, continue. And talking. well, that's that's just something that we want to you know hit on with the youth. Hit something that you know break a mentality, a mm -hmm. mentality that you know only the adults go to church, that only the adults have the right or the authority to do anything in church. God does not look at age, does he? No. no. And honestly, like Jesus was called in like. For his ministry, he was called when he was 30, and before that, he was preparing his way. So why not, as, as youth, prepare our way for our calling, just the same as Jesus did, and like most of the disciples did. And, and you know, you said, you said the word calling several times tonight, and you talked about purpose. Could you explain that to someone who has, they've never been to church, Okay. And they don't really understand when we talk about calling. Can you explain that a little bit more? What I mean by calling and by purpose is by, like, the meaning itself. It's like, you know, why do you exist? Mm -hmm. What are you going to leave behind? And what are you going to make for when you reach heaven? You know, what are you going to build for when you reach heaven? Because, yeah, people can accept Jesus into their heart and they can be saved. But what are you going to build when you get into heaven, what are you gonna make? What are what are the bricks you're gonna set for your your house in heaven? You know, God's gonna see you and uh, he's gonna accept you, but he's gonna say, "What did you do for me?" Mm. And so, you know, it's just it's such a great feeling to be able to please God, because a lot of um, promises, a lot of things that God says, get fulfilled when we provoke His name, and the way we provoke His name is by pleasing Him. Amen. And um, the book of Matthew says that one of our major callings is to make disciples of the nations, to baptize them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so God doesn't say, maybe go do disciples, or only you go do disciples. He, tell, he speaks to all of us, and he says, go and make disciples of all the nations. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what we focus on, and the youth have, I'm, like honestly, the youth are the ones who make the revolution. The youth have the energy. The youth have basically the the more strength. Yes, they have the they're the youth, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they have all the energy, and you know they always say God wasted energy on the yes. youth. They can use that for good. Yes. yes. <laughs> and would you pray for the youth? Yes. Um, I would like you to bow your head mm -hmm. and to think about a person. Maybe you're a parent. Think about your kid right now, and if he's there, will you bring him close to you? And Father, I ask you tonight to fill, your, fill, fill these people with your presence, God. Yes, God. Whoever is watching this show tonight, I just ask you, God, for you to reveal yourself to them, God. I pray for this generation, God. I 
pray that you will lift them up. Yes, I pray God. for your glory to be upon them. I declare that this generation will not fall, but it will keep going, God. Yes, God. It will keep going to reach their calling. It will keep going to fulfill your purpose, God. Yes, God. I declare that every lack of forgiveness, mm. every lack of love, God, mm. will be filled, God, with yes, your Father presence, God. God. Yes. I declare that, that the Holy Spirit will be with them, God. Yes. I declare that right now, wherever they are, God, your presence just come yes, upon God. them, and they have a true encounter with the presence of yes, God, yes, an yes. encounter that they will never, ever yes, forget, God. God, that you will show your glory, yes, God, God, that you will fix their lives, God, and that you will bring them to you. You will bring them close to you, God, not just with this generation, but with their generation, with yes, their future God. generation, yes, God. God. Father, you will bless all of them, God, and we just pray for your fire on them, for your presence, God, and we declare that they will revolutionize this world, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen and amen. So well said. It's been so wonderful just interacting with both of you. I feel like my own spirit has been <laughs> stirred up, and I want to see a greater move with the, this generation, yes. with the youth. God, like you said, does not look at age. It doesn't matter if you're one or 10 or even if you're a senior citizen. That's right. God cares about your soul, and you made that so valid today on the show and I want to thank you for coming you. really enjoyed having you you yeah. guys are truly warriors for Christ and I know you're going to do great things yeah. ladies and gentlemen I want to thank you for joining us I hope that this has been a blessing for you and I pray th that God will use this use something that these young people something that you've seen in their lives today to just stir you up to open up your heart to be kind and to be loving when you see youth in the church, that we do not reject them, but we make them a part of what we are doing, a part of the church, because God cares about the little ones and the youth. So we want to thank you again. God bless you, and thank you for joining us. You will hear, you know, um, and do go and watch, watch their shows. It'll be a major encouragement to you, and get your youth to watch. Because the, the youth needs to know that church can be fun. Church is not boring. These, these two young people that you saw tonight, they're lit up with excitement and enjoyment of just being in the presence of God. God bless you and see you next time on Disciple Makers for Christ. God bless. Bye-bye. What up, world? I am your boy, the Prophet God Star, host of Rap Resurrection. And I just want to come before you for a minute today to encourage you to support Christian TV by getting your Believe in Jesus hashtag t shirt. For the Bible says in Romans 1 16, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ, it is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes the Jew first and also the Gentile what is that good news that Jesus has saved us that Jesus took our place in hell and gave us his seat his place of righteousness in the kingdom of God you can say you you're unashamed you can say that you uh, believe all day but but Support Christian TV and when wear your faith on your chest. Put your faith on display. Go to www.livingwitnesstv.com forward slash believe t-shirt. Again, that's www.livingwitnesstv forward slash dot com forward slash believe t-shirt. Go and get yours today. God bless.